I welcome you to the worship service today in Jesus' name. It's a pleasure to always be back in the house of the Lord. Whenever we come to the presence of the Lord, there is refreshment, there is revival, there is renewal, and uh, we are rejuvenated. And by the grace of God, everything will work out fine as we meet with the Lord in Jesus' name. In the days gone by, everyone that met with Jesus with good intention, everyone that met with Jesus with expectation, never live disappointed. And I am believing that today and through the rest of the days of your life, you will not be disappointed. God knows about you. He knows your situation. He knows your condition. He knows where you are hurting. He knows the things that appear hopeless in your life. Maybe your current situation is like you are in the wilderness of your life. Remember, the children of Israel, they passed through the wilderness, but they came out of it. You will come out in Jesus' name. Maybe your situation is like you are in captivity. All you want to do is, Lord, give me the reason and the purpose why I find myself where I am right now. Because by the power of the Lord, he is bringing you out in Jesus' name. You know, Joseph went into slavery. That is a form of captivity. As a matter of fact, eventually became imprisoned. That is a form of captivity. But the Lord brought him out of that captivity and right in that same place where he was enslaved, right in that same place where he was imprisoned, right in that place where he was abused, the Lord promoted him and became a leader over the people. This is a year of promotion. And the Lord will set the state for you in Jesus' name. You say, how shall it be? Remember, it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You see, Gideon and the rest of the children of Israel were more or less in captivity in their own land. Because the Philistines, the enemies will come and then uh, just overrun them and uh, uh, things were not the way it used to be. And then the time of revelation came. The time of intervention came. And then God showed up through an angel unto Gideon. And then Gideon was referred to thou man of valor. You may not know who you are because of what you are going through. But the Lord wants me to tell you that there is a giant inside of you. And that giant will rise up in Jesus name. And then a prophetic utterance came unto Gideon. And then Gideon said, how shall this things be? Eventually, to cut a long story short, God used Gideon for the liberation of the people of Israel. Daniel was in captivity. Right in that captivity, God lifted him up. In this land, God will lift you up. I know there are people that are saying, hey, since all these many years that she's been gone, that she's been gone, we can't see the, fr the fruit of it. Don't worry. Don't worry. It is your time to blossom. It is your time to reign. And everything that has limited you, the Lord will take them out of your way in Jesus' name. You see, today I feel excited again because I'm still going to talk on greatness. But today, I'm going to concentrate on women. Because many a times, and you know, in the days gone by, it's like only the men can be great. Only the men can accomplish. Only the men can make it. Only the men can prosper. Only the men can rule. Only the men can reign. That is a lie. God created you as a woman for a purpose. Somebody didn't get that. I can hear the men saying Amen. As a woman, God created you for a purpose. Amen. So you are not an accident. You are not a coincidence. You were not made to be trampled on the feet. You have been created to make an impact in your generation. Today I'll be talking on wonder walking women. Wonder-walking women. 
Praise the Lord. As I began to prepare this, I began to get into all kinds of things and eventually I just have to just uh, caution myself and say this is just a one hour sermon. Praise God. Because I realize if I go the way and the revelations and the expositions as I read and as, as I prepare that we are coming, the next one month, the next two months, we will still be talking about women alone. Praise God. And uh, just come for the next women program. Praise God. I think we're just going to devote time and then look at the catalog, the life, the, the account of women, just all these characters in the scripture and then apply them to our lives and then become who God has made us to be. You can be used of God. Remember the Bible says that it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon how many flesh? All flesh, men, women, old, young, all flesh, and your sons, and your, what's the next one? And your daughters. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see vision. That is the word of the Lord. That both men and women are to be used. So when we're talking about greatness, don't just think we're talking about men alone. Don't think we're talking about elderly people alone. As a matter of fact, Daniel was a teenager when God began to use him greatly. Joseph, that we looked at, was a teenager when he made record. He was actually sold into Egypt at the age of 17, according to historians. And the scripture too. And so, you need to understand, uh, Joel 2, 28 is where we just read, where the Bible says, I will part of my spirit. And then, the scripture in the New Testament corroborated what uh, God revealed unto Joel in chapter 2 of uh, verse 17 of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 17. It says again, and it shall come to pass in the last days. In the last days. In the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Again, we see that it wasn't just in the Old Testament alone that God spoke about using women. In the New Testament, we have the same account of God's intention, God's plan, and God's purpose. And so, men, let me encourage you, let me challenge you, uh, let me walk with you a little bit and walk with myself, that the women that God has given unto us, our wives, are not just supposed to be subordinates. Yes, men is the head of the family, and they are our helpmates. The way, the time, the manner they can be really helpmate is when they are standing side by side with us. Praise the Lord. We are, they are not to be surprised. Let me tell you, parents, the ladies that God has given you as children called daughters are giving you so that they can change their world. They are not to be humiliated. We're going to see different accounts in the scripture today, but again, I have to narrow down to something. Narrow down to something. We are told in the scripture you ladies, pay attention here. Many a times, ladies think the only way I can make myself acceptable in the society is when I act like the people of the world, behave like people of the world, dress like people of the world, talk like people of the world, walk like people of the world. You get it wrong. For as long as you are patterning your life after the people of the world, you will never make a difference. You have to pattern your life after God. And God will make that difference in your life in Jesus' name. That is what we are told in the book of Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. The Bible says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. 
the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And so, you need to understand that the only thing that will bring about your elevation, the only thing that will bring about your promotion, the only thing that will bring about your glory is your personal encounter and relationship with the Lord and consistent work with him in the light of his world. God is no respecter of persons. He created man and woman in his own image for his own glory. He's not limited to using you as a person, even as a woman. He uses whosoever is willing, whosoever is ready, and whosoever is available at any given time. Male or female, God will use you. Old or young, God will use you. Just make yourself available. Praise the Lord. Quality time has been spent considering some of the great men that were used in the scripture. Now is your turn as a lady. Now is your turn to shine. Now is your, is your turn to glow. And you will glow in Jesus' name. As we look at this, uh, wonder working women. Let me help you a little bit. I know somebody didn't get it. Those three words, can you repeat them after me? Wonder, working women. Now, pick the first letter of each word of them. What do you get? I didn't get that. W, W, W. You are a worldwide woman. You are not to be in obscurity. You are not to be covered up. You are not supposed to be behind the scene. You see, that is why sometimes I get women to do something in the church. And some say, oh, Pastor, that is not our culture. Well, that is the culture of the Bible. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to be telling you later on, if time permits, maybe at a later date, we'll deal more into some of these women, the culture of the Bible. It's not just that women should just be seen and not heard. They should be seen and they should be heard. But you know, unfortunately, because the women themselves have been so conditioned to not be heard, so anytime, even when you are saying, it's your turn, they think you are talking about the other person. Tell somebody, it's my turn. It's my turn to shine. It's my turn to rule. It's my turn to reign. In the name of Jesus. When you look at the scripture and you see a lot of them, a lot of them, uh, when I was looking at this, I was amazed, I was surprised to see so many women in the scripture. So many women. When you look at Abigail, Abigail used to be the wife of a man called Nabal. And Abigail was a woman with beauty and with brain. That woman, when the time comes, I will tell you how she became a woman of beauty and with brain. But she used her brain to spare the life of the husband and save David from committing murder. Time later on, we'll talk about that. There is a woman called Ada. Ada was the woman that gave the world its first musician. The first musician in the world was born by this woman called Ada. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 4, verses 19 to 23. Then there is this woman called Deborah. If you like, you may say Deborah. She's a woman that was fearless. She was a fearless patriot. And Deborah was that first woman in the scripture that ruled the world, that ruled the nation. She was the prophetess over the nation of Israel. And the whole nation, old and young, men and women, they went to her to listen to her. And God was in leading the nation through her. Dorcas, you've heard of Dorcas. She was such a woman that during the New Testament time, at the time of the apostles, that uh, something happened to her and then she, she, she died. And everybody began to speak about her good deeds. Dorcas, according to the scripture, was a woman in Acts chapter 9, looking at it from verse 36, that her dressmaking made her famous. 
And as a woman, just that handwork you have can turn your life around completely and totally. Elizabeth bore her son in old age. Now you think uh, you're going through some things that are impossible, your situation impossible. Elizabeth was an example of impossibility made possible. Esther was a woman, a woman by whose efforts and exploits the whole nation of Israel was saved in Shishan. Not that alone, we talk about a woman called Eunice. And that will ring bell to some of you. Eunice was a woman that gave birth to a famous evangelist called somebody? Timothy. Thank you. God can use you to turn around the life of the young ones around you, beginning with your own children. We heard of Hannah. Many of us know about Hannah. Who was the firstborn of Hannah? Samuel. Thank you so much. Uh, Hannah was a woman who personified ideal motherhood. With time later on, we get into the details and the nitty gritty of that. And then look at the woman called Ruth. She's the one in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 that says, Entreat me not to leave you not to return from following after you. Where thou goest, I will. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And then, where thou diest, I will die. Praise God for women like Ruth. She was that woman that rose from obs obscurity to riches and to fame. If God could use these people, just to name a few, just to name a few, God will use you in Jesus' name. Women are useful in the hands of the Lord. Women are vessels that God can use. Depending on the plan and the purpose of God for each and every one. Today, we are not going to look at all these women. We're going to narrow down to just one single lady. And this lady is very, very unique because we have only two of her type in the scripture. What I'm saying is, when you look at it from Genesis through to Revelation, you see all the books of the Bible were written by men, except for these two. The first is... Was the first book written by a woman? Okay, let me help you. The book of Ruth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is anybody here bearing Ruth? Nobody bearing Ruth. Praise God. Maybe those of you that have retired, it's time for you to refire. So that your daughter also, amen. Okay, I hear somebody's very rude there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, God bless you, my sister. And then the next book named after a woman is Esther. Thank you so much. There is something unique about these two ladies. If you look at Ruth, Ruth was a Jewish lady. That went into a Gentile land. And all kinds of calamity befell her there. And then she repented, she returned, and she was restored. Repentance, returning, and then restoration. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that is now me, the, the, the mother-in-law of Ruth, I meant to say. Not Ruth herself. And through Naomi now, Ruth, a Gentile, who got to know of God through the mother-in-law, now came unto the land of the Jews and became a Jew by adoption. 
And because she was a Gentile and came to the Jewish nation, got married to, the, uh, to a Jewish man called Boaz, God turned her situation around, and then the cause that was upon her lineage was cancelled on her own part. Connection can bring about a lot of things. Now, on the other hand, Esther was a Jew that was taken captive unto a strange land. And while she was there, in that strange land, a lot of things happened. Her father died, her mother died, and then she was raised by her big uncle called Mordecai. She was not just raised, Esther was raised in the fear of the Lord. Esther was raised in the name of the Lord. Esther was raised in a godly environment. And even though it was a strange land, like Joseph found himself in a strange land, Daniel found himself in a strange land, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found themselves in a strange land, and while they're in a strange land, they maintain their integrity. While in a strange land, they maintain their relationship with the Lord. While in a strange land, they stood their ground in the midst of opposition. Now, Esther, and Mordecai, they did exactly the same thing. And the time came, something happened in the land. The queen of the land was rejected because of what happened. The name of that queen was Vashti. And then the king needed a replacement. To cut a long story short, Esther became that replacement. Esther became that replacement. God paved the way for Esther. God will make a way for you. Amen. There was no hope for the Jews in Shushan. Shushan at that time is right now. If you go into the scripture, that is where we have Iran right now. That is Persia. Not Persia, somebody is Persia, no. The Persian Empire. That is Iran. And it covers quite a wide range of areas all the way to Iraq, all the way to Libya, all the way to parts of the Asian nations and all the rest. And uh, Esther became the queen as at that point in time. God will lift you up. I said God will lift you up high. What made Esther to be favored because a lot of ladies, about 400 of them, were selected to go appear before the king. And out of all these ladies, only Esther was favored. What was the secret of her favor? What was the secret of her elevation? Well, the sum of it is, it is God. You need God in your life. Tell your neighbor, you need God in your life. I said, tell your neighbor you need God in your life. With God, you will never fail. You, with God, you will never falter. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so, Esther got there. And a lot of things began to happen. You may not know why some things are happening in your life. I know I read and I saw some people talk some negative things about Esther and all the rest. Uh, but I want to look at the positive side. I want to look at the plan of God. I want to look at the purpose of God. And uh, as I began to read some of those things, I realized that some of those writers don't understand what it means to be in a strange land. What it means to be in an idolatrous environment. And yet, to stand for God. To stand for God. The name of Esther, the original name of Esther was Hadaza. Hadaza. And which means Maitu. M-Y-R-T-L-E. And Maitu was a tree that bore beautiful flowers. That then was being used for perfume in the Hebrew culture. 
my two tree was also used as a symbol of peace and joy among the people of God in the ancient world. But when Esther got married to Ahasuerus the king, her name was changed unto Esther. What does that word Esther mean? The word Esther means star. Your star will shine. I say your star will shine. Amen. By the almighty hand of God, everything about Esther began to turn around. By the providence of the almighty, Esther began to shine. You will shine in Jesus' name. Amen. God took Joseph from prison to the palace. He took Aaron who was a slave in Egypt and made him the high priest over the people of God. Saul went from obscurity, the first, Saul, the first king of Israel, and became the king over the nation of Israel. David, the shepherd boy, became the ruler over God's people. Daniel went from Paul, P-O-W, prisoners of war, to prime minister in the same land where he was a Paul. I'm telling you, no matter your past, as a matter of fact, no matter your present situation, God can work in you. Amen. Don't limit yourself. Don't look down on yourself. Don't think you cannot. You will in Jesus' name. I said you will make it in Jesus' name. Amen. When you cast your lot with the king of kings and the lord of lords, you can become a star in the royal diadem of the sovereign lord. Let's look at some of the things that made Esther to be great. Wonder walking women. Number one, she had the right kind of support. Supporters. Number two, she was submissive, a submissive lady. Number three, she was a sincere lady, sincerity. Number four, she was a woman of supplication, supplication. Number five, she was a woman of sacrifice. Number six, she was a woman with strategy. A woman with strategy. And number seven, she was a woman that makes sacrifice. Sacrifice. Let's look at them one by one. Support. Esther, chapter 2. We look at it from verse 7. Esther, chapter 2. And as you look at the pages of the scripture, you want to ask yourself, Lord, what exactly are you passing across to me from this passage of the scripture that we are reading? And as you make yourself open to God to speak unto you, he will speak in Jesus' name. Esther chapter 2, verse 7. Verse 7. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. That is, Esther had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful. Whom Mordecai, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. That tells you Esther was adopted. Adopted. Stop right there and look up here. Put your finger there because I'm not done. In order for you to become significant in the kingdom of God, you must first of all be adopted into the family of God. Amen? In order for you to be partakers of the riches of grace, you must be adopted into the family of God. So please pay attention here. Your personal beauty is nothing. I told you in Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30 that Beauty, uh, that um, uh, uh, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. The woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. The woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, Esther became adopted into the family 
of Mordecai, the man that knows God. The question is, to whom are you connected if your friends are people that does not fear God, people that does not live for God, people that does not have the word of God, people that does not base their decisions on the word of God. I'm not talking about people that are merely religious. I'm talking about people that will stand for God and be willing and ready to die for the cause of God. If you are not connected with people like that, you will be limited in life. If you are not connected with people that knows what it means to pray. If you are not connected with people that knows what it means to touch the finger of God. If you are not connected with people that fears the Lord, loves the Lord, and serves the Lord with all their heart, with all their life, you will be limited in life. But praise God, Esther was connected. You will be connected. And that is why I want to plead with you that if you are here today, man or woman, old or young, if you are not yet born again, just like Esther became adopted, you can become adopted into the family of God and become a real child, a true child of God. Verse 9 of the same passage. And they made him please him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification with such things as belong to her and seven maidens. Who is this that we are reading about in verse 9? And who is this that pleased the person? Let's back up to verse 8 for understanding. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shishan the palace to the custody of Hegai that Esther was brought also unto the king's house to the custody of Hegai, keeper of the women. Look up here. I don't want to rush too much because Esther is not something that many of us are used to, very few of us are used to it. So I want to take it a little bit slow today. Esther, number one, found the favor in the sight of Mordecai. Favor. If you please write down favor, because when we finish today, you're going to pray that God grant me your favor. Favor. Esther found favor before Mordecai. Number two, Esther found favor before Hegai. The person that was in charge of all the women, preparing them to go show themselves, present themselves to the king. After so many ladies, she alone, that is what favor will do in the life of a person. You'll be preferred above your equals in the name of Jesus. And because she found that favor, now in verse 9, he again, he again now began to just lavish Esther with whatever Esther needed. And then Esther was obedient, was submissive. We'll get to that later on. But let's see verse 9 again. And they made him please him. That's the Esther please again. And she obtained kindness of him. And he speedily gave her her things for purification. With such things as belonged to her. And the seven maidens which were meant to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maidens unto the best place of the house of the women. Praise the Lord. We see that connection, the support she got from a girl. And that eventually is going to lead into support from the king also. And I want to let you know, the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. It is when you look up unto God that God will send help from around you. You can't do it yourself. You can't make it yourself. Just hold on to God. We are told in Psalm 46 verse 1, the Lord is our refuge. Our very present help when? In time of 
trouble. And I pray that the Lord will be there for you in Jesus' name. In the life of King Esther, we find that God has given her people who helped her and showed her favor. When she was helpless, often Mordecai took her up. When she was in the palace, a guy was there for her. And finally, she had favor in the eyes of the king, Ahasuerus, who chose her to be the next queen. To be successful in life, we need favor. Number one, support. Number two, submission. Submission. Esther submitted herself. That word submission is something we can spend quality time on as a message on its own. Esther submitted herself completely to the authority of Mordecai. Esther did not behave like some of the young people of this time and age. Please, young people, pay attention here. God has given you your parents to be over you as people of authority. That does not mean your dad and mom will always be right. But they are the authorities over you. Remember, God is no respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of authority. God respects office. Please pay attention here. The president of our nation may not do everything right, but that is the president of the United States of America. Unto whom everybody submits. The Congress, they may not make all the right decisions, but whatever decision they make is what we all abide by. Please pay attention. God has placed people over your life. The Bible says, obey them that have the rule. I didn't hear you. Obey them that have the rule over you. We are told in the book of Romans chapter 12, excuse me, chapter 13, verse 1. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. If you submit to your father, to your mother, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, there is a blessing that comes along with you submitting to your parents. Because the Bible says, honor your father and your mother, and what's the blessing that we follow? So that your days, so you can live long. So you can live long. I have this story sometimes ago, I think about two years or three years ago. And here is this pastor of a particular gospel church in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, they have the son, and the son had friends, and the son wants to go out whenever he likes, do whatever he likes, and the parents said, no, son, you can't do that. And the son said, well, I am, you know, I am 17. I am 18. How old are you? Maybe you are just 13. I'm a teenager. And the boy will not listen. To cut a long story short, he ended up leaving the house. And then he moved in with his friends. Disobedience. Rebellion. Stiff necked. He was not ready to conform to the rules and regulations of the parent. He was not ready to follow the instruction and direction of his parent. To cut a long story short, few weeks after leaving home, the dad got a call. Their son had just been shot and killed. Because of disobedience. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So, obey your parents in the Lord. In the Lord. Obey them. And they are to obey their own parents. Who is their own parent? God is their own parent. So, for as long as they are following God, you follow them. If your parent is not telling you, go and steal, go and buy drugs, go and do any sinful thing. Uh, whatsoever they do, just obey them. Just obey them. Just obey them and it will be well with your soul in Jesus' name. So was Esther. Because Esther was submissive to her parents. 
Esther was obedient to her parents. Esther became blessed. There is blessing in obedience. And can we learn from that as a church? We have our spiritual parents also. Unto whom we should listen and obey and follow their instruction and follow their leadership. Because listen to this, whatever a man sow, he will reap. You may say, I'm doing it secretly. Nobody knows. You may say, I am bold. I can even do it to the face of the leadership. Don't worry. The soul that sinned shall die. And whatever you sow, you will reap. So, make right your way. And return unto the Lord like Naomi did. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. The Bible says, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience. Now, please pay attention. After you disobey, after you rebel, you want to have your way and you think gift will solve the problem. No. No. You want to just pacify and you want to use that as a bribe to your father, to your mother. That will not help. Obey. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Let's read the whole passage there. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in bond of friends and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Esther was an obedient and submissive lady. She obeyed the instruction of Mordecai not to reveal her Jewish identity. When Mordecai told her, Mordecai, you are going now as one of the contests or contestants. Don't reveal your identity. They were in Shushan. They were in a strange land. And uh, because she was raised there, she was assumed to be one of them. Amen? She was assumed to be one of them. You know, many times when people ask, where are you from? I tell them where I am from. Amen? Where am I from? Oh, you don't know where I am from. Amen. I tell them where I got my citizenship here. I am from Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. Praise the Lord. But some of them that are smart will now say, but originally... Because everybody has originality. Am I right? Praise the Lord. President Obama has originality. President Bush, former President Bush, has originality. President Clinton had originality. Their great grandparents came from somewhere. Amen? And so, Mordecai said, zip it. Don't disclose anything. And so she went there. You know, some disobedient people will go around and say, you hidden, you unbelievers, you, you, we are the original people of God. We are Jew. Not Mordecai. No bragging. No boasting. Submission. And then when the time for the contest began, and then she got before her guy, the man that was in charge of all the, the maidens, Every instruction that that man gave, uh, Esther submitted to it. Obedient. Do you realize that was one of the qualities of Joseph? That was part of the qualities of um, Daniel? And the only thing you see, the only time you see these people uh, deviating from that norm is when God is involved and they want them to do things that are contrary to the will, the plan, and the purpose of God. Then they say, God is supreme. God is ultimate. God is absolute. And God must rule and reign. And each and every time that happens, God defends his people. God will defend you in Jesus' name. I say God will defend you in Jesus' name. Number three thing that made Esther a wonder walking woman. Sincerity. Esther was a sincere woman. Well, for the one on submission, you look at Esther chapter 2, verse 10, verse 15, and then verse 20. 
Now, on sincerity, Esther chapter 2, verse 22. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it to Esther, the queen. And Esther certified the king. Esther informed the king. Esther alerted the king. That's what the word certified there means. Thereof, in Mordecai's name, sincerity, sincerity, it pays. Chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Esther, chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. So Esther's mates and her chamberlains came and told each other. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai to take away his sackcloth from him. But he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatta, one of the king's chamberlain, whom he had appointed to, uh, to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. Sincerity here came. Some people were plotting to assassinate the king. And then Mordecai got to know about it. And Mordecai, a loyal man, remember Mordecai was a godly man. Always remember, always remember. And Mordecai knew of it and then alerted Esther and said, Esther, hear this. There is a plot by a group of people to assassinate the king. And then Esther got that and went to the king, certified the king, alerted the king, informed the king, there is a plot against you. And she did it. Please pay attention here where sincerity came in. She did it in the name of Mordecai. She did not try to take the glory for herself. She did not try to say, uh -huh, I'm the one, if not for me, king, you would have been killed. No, she did it that, king, this is not from me. This is from Mordecai. You know, some of us, we want to be great, and then somebody's glory, we want to take it upon ourselves. Somebody has labored. Somebody has served. Somebody has sacrificed. He has put, he or she has put in his time and everything. And then you just came and you want to hijack those things. And you just came and you want to just belittle the individual, talk down the individual, and make a nonsense of all the effort and the labor and the sacrifice. Uh, growth and greatness don't come that way. No. Sincerity. You give honor to whom honor is due. And you know, what I tell people is this. No matter who you are, and no matter where you're coming from, and no matter who you were, where you're coming from, when you get over here, pay attention. There are people that God has been using before you came. Amen? Don't come and just, and just run them out. It is because those people have been on the ground that you made something. If they had not labored, if they have not sac sacrificed, there would have been nothing for you to meet when you came. But you came and you want to lord over them. You came and you want them to be pushed here, to be pushed there, so that you can be in the front. Don't do that. You will not become great that way. You will not become honored by the Lord that way. Serve your own time. Give honor to whom honor is due. And the Lord will honor you eventually in Jesus' name. But you know, you come, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't put me where I belong. I am the archbishop of uh, this. I am the this of that. I used to be this where I'm coming from. That's where you're coming from. You're not there anymore. Let us work together here. Praise the Lord. Let us honor and respect people that God are using. In ministry in particular, a lot of water go under the bridge. A lot of water. And those of you that were here many years back when I came, you knew the state of the church, and yet in spite of that, I still gave honor to God and to the person that was here before I came. 
Because if that person had not started something, there'd be nothing for me to start working with. And I work with everybody as much as possible. That is how it's supposed to be. But when we come and all we want is just position, title and everything, recognition, fame, glory, the Lord will see everything and will do like this, watching us. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Esther did not try to take anybody's glory. Esther said, honor to whom honor is due. Mordecai did not know Esther did that. Esther did not backstab Mordecai. Did not speak evil of Mordecai. As a matter of fact, some of us, if not that our leader made us to do one thing or the other, nobody would have known we are anybody. Don't go behind destroying your leader. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. That is what made Esther great. The greatness we're going to get there in a minute. But remember, Mordecai did not know what Esther did, but Esther on her part was very, very sincere. And then, look at this again, another sincerity. When Mordecai now got to know about the plot of Haman to destroy the Jews in the land, because God, the king, Ahasuerus, promoted Haman. And Haman was an ungodly person, and Mordecai will not bow to any ungodly person in any ungodly way. He will do his normal thing, but there was something that Mordecai, sorry, that Haman demanded and wanted from the people. He wanted a worship from the people. And Mordecai said, Only God must be worshipped. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And Haman was not happy because of that. And Haman wanted to kill Mordecai. And not only Mordecai, but destroy all the Jews in the land. And Mordecai became enraged. And then she put sackcloth upon himself. And then she went before the gate of the palace. And then lay himself bare. And then it was told Esther. Esther did not behave as if she did not know Mordecai. Please pay attention here. There are times when our family member, our leader, when something happens and they, there is problem, there are some of us at that time we try to dissociate ourselves. I don't know you. Just like Peter did at the time of the trial of Jesus. You are one of them. No, I don't know him. What are you talking about? You're speaking Spanish? And then the second time, surely you look like one of his disciples. What are you talking about? I said, I don't know him. Some of us are like that. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Esther identified with Mordecai in his crisis. She sent clothing to Mordecai. Mordecai wouldn't take the clothing. Esther didn't know what has happened. Esther didn't know that her own life was at stake in jeopardy at that point in time. Esther didn't know that just a few days from now, all of them were going to be wiped out, but just out of concern, out of empathy. And then she sent another person and said, okay, please go. Help me entreat Mordecai. Find out. Because by law, she couldn't just go to Mordecai by herself. And then, eventually, Esther got to know what happened. You see, sincerity. Even though people of the land did not know that Esther was a Jew, yet she never, never disconnected herself from her uncle. She never said, well, I, I, don't, want them to, I don't want people to see us together. Let me, let me try you with something here. Should I use the word try? No. Let me maybe just ask you a question. If you have a relative that for one reason or the other has been very good to you, nice to you, and all of a sudden the person became insane. And now the person is going on the street. And here are you, a big man, a big woman. Highly, highly pleased in society. And then you see that insane person just acting up and going up and down. 
If you see the person and somebody say, oh, look at that madman. What do you say? You will never be able to say, oh, that is my uncle. That is my brother. That, is, that person is from our town. In the world, in the world, failure is an orphan. But success has many parents. In the Lord, in the Lord, a friend sticketh closer than a brother. And a friend loves it. How often? At all times. A friend love it at all time. It's not only when things are good alone. A friend love it at all. Yes, yes, you correct the wrong, but still in love. As a father to son, you discipline, still in love. As a leader, you discipline, but the love is still there. It's still the paramount thing. Because the situation now is not going to be forever. Things will turn around later on. I said things will turn around later on. So, Esther was very sincere. Very sincere. Number four. Esther was a woman of supplication. A woman of prayer. A woman of prayer. And here we see the power of prayer and unity of purpose. When the thing became known unto Esther, among the Kai gave an instruction and said, Hey, Esther, this is what is going on. Something needs to be done. Look at chapter 4 of Esther. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. And I really want everybody to read this. And mark it in your Bible. Mark it in your Bible. Mark it in your Bible. Because sometimes you see things goes on maybe in the church. And God has allowed you to be here to rescue the situation. If you keep your peace. If you hold your peace. If you keep quiet. If you do nothing. When you get to the other side, God will ask you. The opportunity you have. The privilege you, you have. What did you do? Isaiah, I'm sorry. Uh, Esther chapter 4. What verse did I mention? Verse 14. For if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jew, the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom? Finish it for me. For such a time as this. For such a time as this. For such a time as this. Esther took time to pray. She fasted for three days. And called upon her people to join her in the fast. Before she undertook the assignment given by her uncle. That is a lesson we need to learn. Please pay attention here. There is power in prayer. If we can pray before embarking on any project, if we can pray before embarking on any mission, if we can pray before get, 